doubled my income and, and started scaling my income because I didn't have to chase people around. Even though we offered still the on-site windshield repair and replacement, we weren't going around ch changing all washing cars. From there, I did that for about a year. Then this is around 2005, 2006. I'm sure a lot of you guys, if you're old enough, you remember Hurricane Katrina. I'm sure, Tanji, you remember Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, right? So when that happened, when Hurricane Katrina happened, you know, it hit New Orleans, right? I'm about three, two and a half hours um, west of New Orleans. Freaking everybody got displaced, right? Everybody went to Baton Rouge, Lafayette, Houston, and Atlanta. Like New Orleans lost like, I think almost 2 million residents, like just basically migrated uh, either north or west into different parts of Louisiana and Houston, Atlanta. Well, right around the same time we had a, you know, it was 2005, 2006 era, you know, the real estate market was already booming where we had a super influx of people. And what happened, you guys know what happens to real estate when, when, you know, demand goes up and inventory's tight prices go skyrocketing, right? Well, I had just built me like a little small spec house um, right when I had gotten out of college. And I was like, man, I, I noticed everything was worth almost a third or half more than what people had bought it for or what it had appraised for a couple of years ago. And this is kind of the start of my, my, uh, my, my real estate journey. I was like, man, I bet you if I told my wife, I said, we need to flip our house, right? And our house wasn't that old. Our house was maybe three, four years old. I said, let's, let's flip our house. She's like, okay. So we painted the ends of, painted a few rooms, landscaped the front, put it on the market. It sold in 30 days, made $125,000 when I was like 25, 26 years old. This was the first taste of real estate that I got, right? So I was able to, to flip my own personal house. Then we took that. And if you look at the bottom middle picture, I bought my first, I bought another location. This is a right here in the middle bottom. That's an oil change mechanic shop. I bought it from a, a motivated homeowner. I'm mean, a motivated uh, business owner. He wasn't paying his property taxes or his sales tax. He was on drugs. He was having a lot of problems. I was able to get it for a great deal. So I got that location. So I took all that money, dumped it into that shop, doubled my income again. Then right around the same time, we bought a piece of property on the bayou here. And if you don't know bayou, it's like not a creek. It's not a river. It's just like a small channel of water. But a lot of people want to live on the bayou here in Louisiana. I bought that and I kept it for three months and turned around and flipped that. I made another $25,000 like in three months and I rolled that into an, another shop. And then if you look at the bottom right hand corner, this is the next house we moved in right here. That was a foreclosed house that we bought. We, we moved into that, lived into the, in that for like a year and a half, fixed it up, sold that. I made 60,000 and I bought the shop at the top right corner. So you see what I was, I was almost playing Monopoly. I was using the real estate model to flip to get into, you know, these shops, right? So I did really good with these shops. Um, I, I had these shops. I still have the top right when I sold the rest of them. I still have the top right when I'm trying to sell that one. But I, I used all the real estate funds to, to fund my, my business. And I was like, man, you know, I'm making a lot of money. I, I kind of got away from real estate because I had like four locations at one time and 33 employees. And I was like, man, I'm just going to keep doing this. So I got away from real estate for a little while. You can go to the next picture, Tangie. And scaled my 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 oil change business and kind of got away from real estate but then i got back into real estate about two years later because i was doing really well i was making a lot of money and i bought about two and a half three million dollars worth of single family homes you can see all these, these are all the houses that i actually own that well i've actually sold all these now but i i, I own, owned all these houses plus i think probably about 20 more of these i had about two and a half million dollars worth of single family homes and this is around 2011 2012 i started buying up all these single family homes and I was doing good. The economy was booming here in the, uh, in, in the South. The price of oil where I lived was $128 a barrel. Everybody had jobs. We were a big oil and gas business. So a state, so a lot of people had jobs. Well, I was making probably 10 grand, 18 grand a month passive income with all of these rental properties. You can go to the next slide. And, you know, so here comes, you know, so this is 2012, right? Here comes, and I, I kept these, all these houses for a couple of years. I was doing good with it. Here comes 2014. Oil went from a, $128 a barrel to $28 a barrel, and I got smashed. L Lafayette, in particular, Lafayette lost 18,000 high-paying jobs, which devastated the economy. So you guys, is 2000, you're probably saying, what, what happened in 2014? Uh, I, didn't, I don't remember anything happening, Chris. Well, you're 2000. 14 was 2008 when everything crashed the housing market 
Well, in the South, in Texas and Louisiana, we were booming because oil was, was doing so well. So really in 2008, we didn't see any crash, but our 2008 was 2014. Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, any state in the South that was heavily dependent on oil and gas got crushed, especially Louisiana, especially Lafayette. So oil went from you know, 128 to $28 a barrel. My shops went, every quarter I was losing more and more sales, more and more revenue. Well, all those rental properties, guys, that I had bought, all those single family homes, there were like nicer single family homes. I paid like 125, 150,000. They're worth 175, 200. They all started going vacant. Like I literally went from making 18 grand a month in positive cash flow to, to 4,000 to 2,000. Then the break and even, and then the, I even had to start stroking checks. That's how many vacancies I had because all these people couldn't pay rent no more because the majority of the people that were renting my houses were in the oil field. And they were going bankrupt, losing a job, moving to Texas, moving to Florida, look for more employment. You go to the next slide. Um, so basically, it devastated the, my business. Not even just my rental business, but my my oil change business. We lost. We went. We were doing. We were doing close to two million dollars a year, a little bit more than two million, and we went down all the way to doing six, seven hundred thousand dollars a year, less than half in sales. I had to let go half of my staff it was brutal like i was freaking i was like oh my god what what am i gonna do right well luckily guys right around this time right around the same time like by the grace of god i got i started wanting to get back into real estate but right before right around the, when the crash was happening and i started going on youtube and i was like you know let me check out you know let me check out some investing so i'm always on youtube checking out stuff and somebody talked about wholesale i was like what's this wholesaling right and i, I watched a bunch of videos and i was like man i can do that so I actually wholesaled a couple of my single family homes and I made like 2,500 here, five grand there. Nothing, nothing really great, but I couldn't really put the whole wholesaling piece together. I understood the model, but like there was a lot of missing gaps. So I hired like three mentors back to back to back. When I hired those mentors, guys, I went from after 30 days after hiring those mentors, I made $47,000 that first month after that, after 30 days of my first mentorship. No kidding. I literally told my, the guys in my shop, I said, listen, I'm doing this full time. I threw them the keys. I said, don't call me unless somebody dies. I'm focusing on wholesaling. Cause I mean, I can make $47,000 by myself. You know, you, you know how much money, and I made a lot of money with those shops, but for me to net $47,000 and not have to have 33 employees, I could do that on my own. It was pretty incredible, right? So from there, right, what, what I did was, you know, I was like, man, this is what I need to do. I'm going to expand this business. So I started opening up new markets. I got into Baton Rouge. I got into Lake Charles. I started opening up markets right now. We're actually, it says four markets, but we're actually in five markets now. You know, we're in Lafayette, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, uh, Mobile, Alabama, and we're in the panhandle of Florida, Pensacola, all the way to, to Panama City Beach, Florida. You can go to the next slide. So needless to say, guys, I was like, man, I found my saving grace. I was like, oh my gosh, like I can make this kind of money. And guys, as you know, in, in a, you know, with wholesaling, when you, it, it's, it does really well in a down economy, right? And it, it does good in a good economy, right? But when you have a down economy, wholesaling thrives. It's inducive. It's very inducive to a, a down economy where, because why? There's a lot of motivation, a lot of, you know, distress. People want to sell their house. So that's why I was crushing it because there's so many deals. Well, you know, right around the same time, um, you know, I was like, man, I, I, I need to, I really need to focus back on passive income, right? And guys, I'm telling you all this because I want you to, I want you to see the whole journey because I, I don't, at, my intention is to show you how to become a real estate investor and a real estate entrepreneur and not just get stuck in wholesaling. You, I, I love wholesaling. I will always do wholesaling, but you, it, it's an evolution, guys, right? It's an evolution of, you know, going from wholesaler to, to wholesaler to flipper to buy and hold to land development like, and, and being an actual real estate investor. This is why I'm telling you guys all this. So needless to say, I started crushing it in wholesaling. I was making 40, 50, 60, and I started making 70, 80, 100 grand a month. And I was like, okay, this is what we're doing. So I sold off all of my shops besides one. I still got one more left to sell. And I started focusing on really, really deep diving wholesaling and stacking all that money and buying multifamily for passive income, right? So if you can see to the right, right here, you get pictures of mobile home parks and of small apartments we sold off and i got a, you know x mark on the single family home i sold off all those single family home guys like you know it's you know it, it's it's funny because i just went to a, a multifamily, actually a mobile home park investing conference in new orleans and ben carson was there he's the um, 
the Affordable Housing Commissioner for Donald Trump, and we got to listen to him speak, and he was talking about how there's a crisis in America. There's a crisis for affordable single affordable housing and single family home ownership is plummeting because it's becoming unaffordable it's so expensive and america's not getting richer and richer guys the statistics are showing like it's getting poorer and poorer so what's needed and wanted right now affordable housing you can go to the next slide so i've been need to say i've been going and and buying up all these multifamily and mobile home parks and i'm using the wholesaling method to find all of these uh, apartment complex. As a matter of fact, I just, I just wholesaled an apartment complex last week. I made $70,000 on that I was going to keep, but I'm going to assigning my contract. I made 70 grand on. So you, I'm going to talk about that too here in a minute. You, you don't just, you don't want to just wholesale single family homes. You can wholesale multifamily and make huge spreads. So, so these are the things that I've learned along the way guys from, you know, you know, almost going bankrupt with, with the shops when we had in 2014 and with, with the houses when, when the economy collapses, some of the things I've learned. So you know, I wish I'd have started wholesaling earlier. For you guys that are going to watch this, you guys that might be in their 20s, 30s, whatever it may be, if you want to get into real estate, you absolutely need to start with wholesaling. Let me tell you why. Those single family homes I bought, those two and a half million dollars worth of single family homes, I bought all those through a realtor, right? That's not where the deals are at, guys. The deals are direct to seller, off market, heavily discounted. I was buying those deals with a realtor at you know, 80, 85 cents in the dollar, very marginal gains. Like you need to be buying a lot more deeply discounted than that. And it's all relative. Obviously if you're in California or Miami, it's super high in market, 80 cents on the dollar is a pretty good deal. But, but I'm talking about middle-class America where the average home price is 150 to 250. You need to be buying at 65, 70 cents or, or cheaper on the dollars. So if you get into real estate, you start with wholesaling. So that way you can get into the best deals. That's all the wholesaling business is guys it's it's basically it's a means to an end it's so that you can have access to the best deals right so another tip you know so make sure you if you're 20 years old it, you you need to learn the wholesaling piece it is the foundation guys it's the absolute foundation of, of wholesale of, of real estate investing because if you can't find a deal you're dead in the water it's as simple as that you have to better find deals um now what you need to do is when once you start wholesaling you got to stop wholesaling everything you, meaning there's deals that you can take down that you can do what's called a wholesale. If you don't know what a wholesale is, it's not a flip and it's not a wholesale. It's kind of like in between you're wholesaling it to a full retail buyer, meaning that you're going to buy a, You actually get a property and it has to meet a certain criteria, which I can train you and I can help you with that. You know, we look at a property, if it's just a dated house, it's maybe 20 years old, 25 years old, it's just dated, but it's in a great neighborhood days on market in that, in that particular neighborhood are like 30 days or less. And there's a demand for that neighborhood we'll buy it. Like for, I'm gonna give you an instance. I bought a property in Baton Rouge. I paid 165 for it, right? 165 to appraise for 258 as is. What I did is I act. So if I, if I'd have just wholesaled that, I would have probably only made 10 grand, maybe 15 grand. But I was like, man, somebody, I, I got with my real, I was like, what, what would this house sell for as is? And how long would it take? She said, Chris, they'll probably sell in the, in the 230 to 240 range. I said, perfect. How long would it take? She said about the average days on the market is 20 to 30. I said, perfect. Let's buy this thing. I closed on it, threw it back in MLS. Seven days later, we got our offer for 238. 238, guys. So what's, the, what's 238 minus 165, right? That, what is that? That's uh, $55,000. So this is really important for you guys. You've got to get access to private money. If you don't, have, and, I, and, and guys, I, I have my own capital, so I'm fortunate enough to do that. I'm telling you, because yeah, I know you guys are like, well, Chris, I can't buy a house. Yes, you can. You don't have to have good credit. You don't have to have a million dollars in the bank. You need to get access to private money. And how do you get access to private money? You go shake the trees. You go talk to people that got money, right? They're, every investor is looking for, if people that got capital, they're looking for places to place their money to make a return. If you show them you got an asset that you bought, that you bought at 60 cents in the dollar, they'll buy it for you. And you give them a piece of the pie. You say, hey, look, just fund this deal for me. I'll give you four grand, five grand of this, of this deal. They'll do it all day long, right? especially if you're buying it in a good neighborhood and it's discounted. So stop wholesaling everything, learn how to take down deals, learn how to throw them back on, use, use MLS. Who's got the best cash buyers list, guys? Who's got the best cash buyers list? It ain't you, it ain't me, it's MLS. MLS has, you have access to thousands of buyers, not just on the investing side, but on the, you know, the full retail side. So a full retail buyer bought that deal in seven days for me, right? Um, so it's just, it's still tips and tricks like that. So get access to the private money, stop wholesaling everything, 
make sure you start wholesaling early. If you want to go big and wide, guys, you're not going to, you're not going to become a super millionaire being in one market. I'm giving you some high level of training right here. The biggest players along with me and a lot of my buddies I know that are doing this and making millions of dollars are in multiple markets, guys. You're not going to be in one market and make a ton of money unless you're in a huge market like Dallas, uh, Houston, Miami, you can probably make a good amount of money, but e even those markets, there's only so many deals. You got to go big and wide. How do you go big and wide? You partner with people. My, the way I do it is I partner with realtors. I partner with realtors that are in those markets that I can partner with. Why do I say realtors? Because why? They know the market already. They know the neighborhoods. They know the areas. They know the, they know the, the hot markets versus the bad markets. They, um, they, they just understand the whole dynamics of that market because I don't know the market. I can't just drop in a market and, and know if a lead comes through the office, if it's a good area or bad area. So why wouldn't you leverage those realtors, right? And we, we do like a, a you know, we, we'll, we'll make a cut and we'll, we'll do like a 60-40 split. So another thing too, I love the online space. This is where I get a lot of my leads. I, I, besides with Tangie, I do a lot of stuff with Tangie too on the, on the, um, the direct mail side, but I'm really a, a big online guy. I like online leads because they're the low hanging fruit. I want, I want people to, to chase me. I don't want to chase other people, right? So with that said, make sure you, you get you get on and get do some online marketing. Online marketing is very, very good. Like as far as I'm talking about low hanging fruit, you gotta think of a dog, right? When you chase a dog, what does it do? It runs away. When you walk away from a dog, it walks to you. The same thing with inbound marketing versus outbound marketing. Inbound marketing, what do I mean by inbound marketing? Facebook ads, PPC, SEO. This is gonna because why? They're they're going online, they're chasing you, they're going after you. Cold calling, um, direct mail, um, you know, all these different other uh, text blasts, like you're chasing motivation. I want motivation to chase me. So not, and I'm not saying I don't do cold calling. I do cold calling. I do direct, I do all those things, but I really like the online space. So dominate the online space. That's where the low hanging fruit is. Track, measure, and, and measure everything you do, guys. Like you have to track everything with statistics. How many leads came in that day? What lead source? Was it direct mail? Was it a probate lead? Was it a you know, absentee owner, was it a PPC, a SEO, or a Facebook, and track that so you can adapt and change to each individual market because not every market is the same, guys. Every market is different. Next. So let me go over uh, the pro. So this is why I'm investing in mobile home parks, and we actually have the cons and pros uh, reverse. So that where it says cons, it should say pros. So this is why I invest in mobile home parks and not single family homes anymore. I, I said, I'll still buy a single family home here and there, but it's mostly just a flip. I, I don't typically hold them long term. Um, so Warren Buffett is buying mobile home parks and mobile home manufacturing companies right now. He just bought out that company called Clayton Mobile Homes, and he's buying out a bunch of other big, huge mobile home parks. There's a reason for that, right? Single family homes are becoming unaffordable, right? You know, it, it's, it's funny because it's, I mean, a brand new brick on slab house right now, it costs you a quarter of a million dollars to buy in a lot of markets so it's just it's becoming unaffordable so it, it a lot of people can't afford that they, they can't even afford to get a loan for that much less you know rent it on top of that i mean a brand new two hundred fifty thousand dollars house might cost you depending on what market you're in two thousand to twenty two hundred dollars in rent you know the average i think the average rent in america is probably eight to twelve hundred bucks so i want to be in the, the you know the sweet spot right and and mobile homes are very affordable so mobile homes are cheaper to buy than apartments and cash flow with way better guys so apartments they typically don't st tend, tend to stay in that long compared to mobile homes. I've, I've read the statistics. Most people move out of an apartment within, I think it's 10 to 14 months. That I think the average for mobile homes are like, like three to five years people will stay in mobile homes. Like it's almost triple or quadruple, or, you know, the, the amount of time that people stay in mobile homes versus an apartment or single family home. Um, they're faster and cheaper to rehab. So if somebody trashes my mobile home park or mobile home, like, or trash is my single family home. It might cost me 20, 30, sometimes $40,000. I've had damage in the single family homes. If somebody trashes a mobile home, guess what it, it, it might cost me? And they have to really destroy it. It might cost me 5,000 to rehab it. The cost per unit is a lot cheaper. I can buy, I can run Facebook traffic ar around my area and say, hey, uh, you know, uh, Facebook ad, we buy used homes. And I'll get tons of people inboxes. Hey, I need to sell my used, I need to sell my mobile home. And nobody else can buy it because it's a used mobile home. I'll go in there. And uh, you need to buy it on a lease option or, or buy it on a finance or buy it cash and haul it into my park. So I, and I can usually get them for 2,500, maybe five grand, put a couple grand into them. It maybe cost me a couple grand to, to haul them into the park 
and I'm all in at eight or 9,000, sometimes 10,000, and I'm getting seven, 50, 800 bucks a month in rent. It's like a one year payback. It's, it's ridiculous, right? Apartments don't do that. Single family homes don't do that. Can use the wholesale method to buy up cheap older trailers for pennies on the dollar from motivated sellers using Facebook ads, newspapers, et cetera, et cetera. We just talked about that. Uh, they're more versatile than apartments. Can owner finance the trailers and then charge lot rent? So, you know, if I don't want to own the trailer no more, I can sell the trailer on a lease option and, and make them give me, you know, 1500 bucks down and 750 for the next five, 10 years, right? And they'll, it'll pay for itself another three or four times. Now, the cons of owning a mobile home park, um, banks don't like to lend on them. You know, it's really tough to get a loan for a, a mobile home park when you're first getting started if you have no track record. However, this is a huge opportunity. We've already bought two parks on owner finance terms because it's hard for people to get loans. So I teach a lot of this stuff. I teach you how to buy parks on terms. And that's, the, that's the, another pro is that you can buy these parks on terms all day long. But they are tough to get traditional bank financing. But once you get it on terms, owner finance, you keep it for a year, stabilize it, you can bring it to a bank. Typically, then they'll refinance you. Next. So another thing I want to tell you guys that, that I see a lot of people not doing, and I, I, I do it in my business, is what helped me become very successful in the markets I'm in, is brain yourself, guys. Like You should be telling everybody what you do and how you do it. You need to be doing Facebook Lives, you know, telling people you buy houses that you're looking for, you know, people that need to sell their house fast for cash. Um, you need to be telling all your friends. You, you need to be like, let me give you an instance. Like every time I go to the gym in the morning, right? Every, I make it a, I make it like a habit. Every time I see a realtor, I always, Hey man, where's those deals? Hey, where's all those deals? Like you ain't sending me no deals no more. Hey man, you hiding deals from me? And I'm always joking. I'm always like over and over. And I, every, cause I want to know every realtor in town because they're going to have deals. They're going to get popular listings every now and then. And I want to be top of mind. So I brand myself over time so that I can, you know, be stuck in their mind to really, really the first person they think of is Chris Rude when they have a deal. Right. Next. Now, you know, how do you, so Chris, how do you scale? you know, your time, right? Because I'm going I'm to tell you this, this is, this is a highly paid grind guys. Like you're going to, if you're going to want to take it to the next level, like, like I have, you know, I have a team, we, we have eight people that work for us now, but the reason I was able to scale as fast as I was able to scale in is one reason, personal assistant, that should be your first hire, not an acquisition manager, not a disposition manager. It has to be a personal assistant, get you a personal assistant to do everything that doesn't make you money taking phone calls, uh, right, making appointments or checking emails, um, ordering bandit signs, ordering a list from Tangi at foreclosures daily, doing all these things that, you know, that eat up your time that are not high paying activities, right? You should, you as an, in, as, as a wholesaler, when you're first getting started, the three things, I call it the BSC triangle. These are the three things that you should be working on all day, every day, if you want to scale your real estate business. And that's buyers, sellers and capital buyers sellers and capital right bsc it's a triangle you got buyers sellers capital buyers sellers capital most people that get into wholesaling they, they, they work on the bottom line buyer sellers buyer sellers buyer sellers, and all they do is wholesale if you're going to take your business to the next level you got to get you have to start finding capital right so you can take down some of these deals like we talked about earlier where you can wholesale a deal or maybe to take down a flip and go for the bigger profits i don't advocate being being a big time flipper because I think they over glorify it on HGTV and ain't that sexy. We, we typically don't flip a property and let, if it needs more than 40, you know, 30 grand, 40 grand, we're not doing it. Like we, we want simple paint and floors, easy fix, throw it back on MLS. Otherwise it'll eat up your time guys. But to do that, you've got to get access to capital. So in the meantime, once you start scaling, you, you, you want to work yourself into a point where like you can't do anymore. Then you hire a personal assistant. Then you start, you start scaling yourself as a, as an individual where you start talking to more buyers and sellers and then getting access to more capital. That should be your main focus. Once you scale that, then you can go ahead and, and hire an acquisition manager. I'm telling you, don't hire an acquisition manager first. A lot of people say they want to hire an acquisition manager first. That is wrong. Hire a personal assistant first and scale you because nobody's going to do it as good as you. As soon as you hire an acquisition manager, I'm telling you, your sales are going to go down a little bit because nobody's going to do it as good as you. And there's, there's people out there that may do it better than you, but it's going to take a lot of training, especially if never been trained before. You need to focus on becoming the best acquisition person, you as an individual first. Then you can start 
training another acquisition person after you've, you've uh, scaled your time with a personal assistant. Buyers, sellers, capital. That is how you're gonna scale your business. So you can go to the next slide. Now, this is huge guys. Me and my wife do a lot of deals together. My wife is heavily, heavily involved in my business and she has five, we have five kids together, right? She's a realtor. This is her land development deal that's, you know, this is her, um, this is her land development deal. This actually, this, all this property, this is 15 acres that we're developing. We found this through a wholesaling pipeline. Well, my wife actually found it through another realtor from my wife branding herself as, as you know, telling everybody, Hey, I'm looking for deals. Hey, I'm looking for deals. And we got this property. This is a, it was the distress property owner. He's from New York city. He wasn't paying his property tax. I guess he was having some, some issues. We were able to pick up all this property for $28 an acre. We're selling those individual lots for each house for 175,000 a lot right now. And we paid 28,000 an acre. Now there is some infrastructure. We're probably going to put about a million bucks um, into the infrastructure, but it, at the, when it's all said and done, we're going to sell it. All the lots will be around 2 million bucks. Uh, my, you know, my cut of that is going to be substantial. We'll, we'll make six, $700,000 of that once it's all sold off. We've already sold off like two lots already, but get your wife involved with you. And I'm telling you this, not, I'm not telling you this to brag about land about, I'm telling you this because you as a team, as an individual are going to be more powerful than you as an individual. You gotta, you gotta do it together guys. I'm telling you do this entrepreneur, real estate entrepreneur journey with your wife get her involved in. You might say, well, we got kids and she's not that motivated. Listen, my wife wasn't always that motivated. I guarantee you when you start making big checks, you start making some money, she'll get motivated. I promise you. And, and, and there's nothing better than building wealth with your wife together. Nothing better guys. It, it's going to, it's going to help you do this together and you're going to have a passion and purpose together. You're more likely to stay together. You're going to be happy together because you're going toward a common goal. You can go to the next slide. Be careful who you get your, you know, your information from or who you hang out with, you know, you know, who, who do you listen to? Who do you get your, you know, who do you hang around with? What's the, you're the average of the five people you hang around with the most, right? You know, I always, always try to level up. I try to get around people that are doing big stuff. You know, I do, you know, I do some work with Grant Cardone. I get my, my kids and wife involved when we go over to his office and do some work together. You know, make sure you get around people that are doing better than you. Always, always, you know, if you, I'm going to be honest with you guys. If you still hang around all your buddies from high school, you're probably not leveling up. I'm going to be real with you guys. It's probably a tough pill to swallow, but you, you, you're going to have to get around people that are doing better than you. And it takes, it takes getting uncomfortable. You got, you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And the way you do that is, is you put yourself around people that are doing massive things. And what will happen is you'll level up by default. You know, so, you know, when I get together with my buddies, you know, my buddies aren't, we're not drinking beer and watching LSU and Alabama games. When I'm with my buddies, we're freaking talking business guys. Like, I don't care what LSU or Alabama or the NFL or Super Bowl. I don't care about any of that. Like, I don't want to be on the sidelines. I don't want to be a spectator. Put me in the game, coach. Like, I want to be in the game, right? I think you need to understand that, you know, all this, 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 this hanging out with your buddies and it's nothing wrong. I'm not knocking people that do that, but I'm telling you, if you want to, if you want to take entrepreneurship seriously, it takes fanatical focus, fanatical focus. And you, you can't, you got to take all the distractions out all this. Like, it seems like a lot of, a lot of guys these days that have like an entertainment mentality, like they always want to be entertained. You got to get fanatically focused on educating yourself, right? You know, get out of this entertainment mentality and get into an educational mentality, go to masterminds, go to seminars, go to, you know, go to events. And I'm telling you, that's where, that's what, if you're on this webinar, guys, you're probably a part of that 1% because you're reaching, you're reaching for information. You're trying to better your life. You're trying to do better with yourself. So I know if you're on this webinar, this message is for you. This is going to resonate with you. You need to get around the right people. The right people are not your buddies from high school. I'm telling you that the right people are going to be at events masterminds because they're just like you. They're searching. They're searching for that guy or girl that can help them take it to the next level that one little piece of information that's going to catapult them to the next level, right? You can go to the next slide. Don't follow the herd guys. Like I, I'm, I do me. Like I don't, I don't listen to nobody. I say I don't listen to anybody. I don't listen to what the normal everyday person does. Like I do a lot of different things. Like I, you know, all of our kids, we just put all of our kids out of homeschool, you know, or pull them out of school and now we're homeschooling them. You know, we don't, uh, I do a lot of fasting. Like I don't, you know, I, I don't eat four or five, six meals a day. Like everybody tells you, I eat one meal a day. 
there's so much benefits in, in fasting and, and health and, and that that's not, that's very unconventional. Um, you know, becoming an entrepreneur is, is, is not following the herd guys. Like it's going to be crazy what you're going to have to do to be successful as an entrepreneur. So you're, if you're on this webinar, like you're probably entrepreneurial and you're probably a weirdo. Let's be real. You're probably a weird kind of guy. You're like, you know, if you told your mom or dad or your buddy that you want a webinar trying to learn real estate investing, I tell you like, Hey, what are you doing? Like, who do you think you are? You got to be a little off guys. Like you got to be a little crazy because you're going to have to do crazy things. This ain't normal. Like most people go to school, go to college, get a job, make an 80 grand a year for the rest of their life and die at 70. Right. And they have to retire at 60. They have 10 years of life and they die. Man, you don't want that, guys. You want freedom. You want wealth. You want to pass on generational wealth. And the only way to do that is to, when everybody's going right, you got to go left, guys. When everybody says, look over there, look, look the other direction. Stop following the herd. The herd mentality is what's killing most, you know, most people in America. They believe everything that the media says. It, it's just not the truth, guys. You're going to have to do things that are unconventional to get unconventional results, right? You're going to have to be very you're going to have to put yourself in positions that are uncomfortable. And, and if you're worried about what other people think about you all the time, you probably should just keep your job, right? Because I'm telling you, as soon as you start going right, when everybody's going left and you get away from the herd, they're going to start talking about you and be like, what you doing? They're going to laugh at you. And if you're not mentally prepared for that, it, you, can get, you can be put back and kick, you get your feet kicked out in front of anything and you're going to want to go back into the herd mentality. But you got to block all that stuff out. And I'm going to talk about how you block all that stuff out. You can go to the next slide. So guys, listen, you know, it's time to diversify. Like we're going to have an economic collapse here soon. Right? I'll, and I hope I'm wrong. I'm not telling you to scare you, but I'm telling you, we've been in a bull market now for going on 12 years. And usually we have a, we have a market cycle every, every eight to 10 years, usually the economy corrects and we still have not had a correction yet. So something is gonna got to give, right? Something's going to happen. So guys, I'm telling you this because I, I want people to be educated on this. You've got to have multiple sources of income. Get yourself a side hustle or two. If you got a job right now, maybe you're making forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year at your job, you're, you're, you're leaving yourself open to get hammered when the economy collapses. Make sure you get a side hustle and there's no better side hustle than starting with wholesaling, guys. Start with wholesaling because when, this, when the economy does shift, guess what? There's going to be deals everywhere. Deals will be everywhere when the economy shifts. That's when you get rich. That's when the, the big smart money comes in. When everything collapses, everybody, all the smart money comes in and buys everything while it's down. Not when everything's up. But I'm telling you this because you need to get a side hustle. So even if it's not wholesaling, I don't care what it is. You know, Maybe it's uh, just a side job cutting grass. Maybe you start a lawn company. Uh, maybe you start a car wash. I don't know, whatever it is, but get you a side hustle. But like I said, there's no better side hustle than wholesaling to make the amount of money. I don't know of a better business model that requires the least amount of capital, the least amount of risk, and, the, and, and, and pays the best and the highest than wholesaling. There's nothing. I mean, look what it costs to, to start a franchise, say a Subway franchise. It's like $70,000 to start a Subway franchise. Then you got to buy, uh, you know, kitchen equipment. Then you got to hire uh, employees. Then you have to get a, you know, brick and mortar building get into a two-year lease, right? And if you're lucky if you make any money. Guess what? If you do wholesaling and it doesn't work out, guess what? What you got, you have a little bit of marketing money and a little bit of time and maybe a, a mentor you pay, paid. That's about it. Like it ain't. So this is the golden goose, guys. Wholesaling is the golden goose. And if you get wholesaling right, everything else will go right because you understand the dynamics of how to find a deal and how to buy super discounted. So in, in another thing, stay away from high-end flips and rentals. If you're, gonna, if you're already in real estate right now and you're watching this, do not flip any high-end houses. Only flip what you're willing to keep and rent out, meaning don't flip a house like if you're in an average market of say 150, 200,000, don't go and flip some three, four hundred thousand dollar house right now. Because if for one, it's going to take a little while to sell, and two, if the economy crashes, that's going to be really tough to rent. But if you have a little 120, 550,000 dollar house, you better rent that for you know a thousand, twelve, fifteen hundred bucks, you're, you're still good. So that's a hedge for that. Um, staying this in the safe zone of affordable housing. Make sure you're in whatever the affordable housing safe zone for you is. Like in my market, it's you know, 800 to 1,000 or 700 to 1,000. That's affordable housing in my market. Everybody, a lot of people can afford that. Even if the economy crashes, people can still afford that. So stay in the affordable housing in the safe zone. Go to the next slide. So I'm a big advocate, guys, of personal development, right? 
you're not going to scale. A lot of you guys, and it's funny, I watch all these guys, they're buying programs, they're doing this, they're going to seminars when they should be working on themselves, guys. You, you can't live up to your potential unless you're doing personal development. You can't, you can't, a lot of times you, you see a lot of people get all these mentorships and they don't do nothing with it because a lot of the times they're just not mentally prepared or they're not personally developed enough to implement the information that they're getting, right? So I, I try to work on myself. This is my little hack, right? It's mind, body, spirit, right? How do you live up to your potential? You, you segment who you are as an individual. You have a body, you, you, are, you have a mind, and you are a spiritual being. Every, most religions on this planet say that you're a spiritual being, right? And you have a body. This body that we're all in, it's just a, it's just a house that, that holds you, you as a spiritual being. And you have a mind that you think with. So if you, you, know, you segregate each individual and you work on that each individual piece, you, you will scale and get better. You'll scale your potential, right? You get smarter. You'll get faster. You think you'll get better. So let's start with the mind, right? You guys should be reading books every morning. I have like rituals and routines, right? I'm ritualistic. I wake up every morning, anywhere from five to six o'clock in the morning, I read for at least an hour to an hour and a half a personal development book on, you know, either business, uh, mindset, entrepreneurship, all kinds of stuff to just scale my, my thinkingness and scale my awareness, right? You have to, you got to get your awareness at another level to be, you know, to live up to your potential and to be able to, to be a good entrepreneur, right? Go to masterminds, right? Go Try to go to at least one or two masterminds a year. This is going to help you with your mind, right? Get a mentor and coach. I always have mentors and coaches. Go to conferences. These are because you're going to, if you're around all these other guys that are skilling up, you're going to you're going to level up and skill up by default by being around other people at these conferences. Um, body, take care of your body, guys. Who cares if you're worth a hundred million dollars, but you weigh you know you weigh three hundred pounds, right? Nothing. If maybe some of you guys weigh three hundred pounds on, on this. Uh, video, but I'm not saying that to be ugly, but just, it's not healthy. Right. We've been lied to, like, you don't need five, three, four, five, six meals a day. Like, you know, it's funny because we, we come from the caveman days, right? We are, we don't need, they didn't have a grocery store at every corner back in the caveman days. You'd be lucky if you ate one meal a day or one meal every other day, you know, it's why the cancer rate is so freaking high right now. It's crazy. Exercise guys, there's something about high level entrepreneurs. You look at a lot of the high level entrepreneurs, most of them in phenomenal shape. And they take care of the body because when you take care of your body, it makes your mind a lot sharp, right? You're able to think, think really sharp when you take care of that body. Learn about keto, right? Everybody says, don't eat fat. So fat free this, but that's all horse shit. Like fats, healthy fats are good for you. I eat tons of coconut oil, avocados. I freaking, I'm like, a, my body's like a well-oiled machine when it comes to energy because I don't pump it with all this processed sugar. Get, stop eating Starburst every day and Kit Kats you know, in between your breaks is killing you. It's killing your energy level and it's killing the way you think. Because if you're going to, if you're going to scale and, and be an entrepreneur, you need a lot of energy, guys. Let's be real. You're going to have to be healthy. So take care of your body, fast, exercise, learn to eat right, get all that processed sugar. And then look, I'm from South Louisiana, guys. I like to eat some crawfish etouffee every now and then. I'm not going to say and tell you, I don't cheat every now and then. I'm going to cheat here and there. On the spiritual side, you got to have good ethics, right? You got to, you got to do the right thing, right? That's a spiritual activity, you know, because nobody knows about it. You can't see, feel, and touch ethics. It, you know, make sure you're doing the right thing. You're making really good decisions, right? Um, you're disciplined, right? Discipline is an ethics thing that you have to put in discipline. So it's an ethical thing to be disciplined. So you got to make yourself disciplined. And the way you do that is you put ethics in on yourself. If you know you're not supposed to do that, don't do it. If you know you're supposed to do something, force yourself to do it, right? The most successful people are not people that are really smart or really learned this. They're, they have a unique ability to make themselves do the things that they don't want to do. This one I just said, they have a unique ability to make themselves do the things that they don't want to do. Have good intentions, guys. Like, you know, karma, I say karma is a bitch, it's, excuse my language, but it, it's so true. Like, whatever you sow, so shall you weep. I think that it says that in the Bible, and it's so true, guys. If you have bad intentions and you're secretly doing bad things to people, it will come back and bite your ass. It will come back. And it will happen directly to you in one manner or another. Make sure you're meditating, guys. Meditate on, meditate and visualize your future. Like there's something about when you sit down and you actually visualize in your mind what you have to see into the future of what you want to happen for it to actually happen in the present. Now, I'm not talking about hocus pocus. I'm, and I, you probably say, oh, there goes this law of attraction stuff. This stuff is real, guys. My life is a testament to all these different things visualization, meditation, taking care of myself, tithing, giving back to my church. You know, I always give, you know, we always donate money to our church and all that stuff comes back to me. So this is kind of the little life hacks, entrepreneur hacks that you're going to use to live up to your potential, you know, to do these three things. So next. 
Now, personal development, guys, this is the key to you guys scaling your mom, you know, you as, a, as an individual, you're going to have to work on yourself. This is how you level up. This is how you're going to be a good wholesaler. The most successful real estate investors I know are just highly, ver highly evolved versions of themselves. Because why? They're personally developed. They go to masterminds. They're always reading. All of my buddies that, that, I, that I, I, I hang with and, and, and do go to masterminds with, I talk to in business, they're all super into personal development. You know? So you need to really, really work on this and, and really work on yourself, guys. So if you work on yourself harder than you work on your business, your business and life will improve by default. Same goes for your team, right? You can't just be the Superman. If, if you, you, you developed yourself into this highly evolved version of yourself, you got to help other people, especially people that work for you on your team. I'm always doing personal development with my, with my team, having them read books, having them work on themselves. And what will happen, your business will increase and do better by default. So the secret, guys, is personal development, right? If you're going to go broke, go broke on yourself first. No matter what the economy does, you as an asset will never depreciate. If, you know, so this tells you if you, you're struggling to do deals, you need to stop what you're doing and you need to work on yourself, guys. So understand that it's all about personal development. No, the economy will never dictate that. that you, you can't take away what you put into your mind and yourself, right? Next. So you got to ask yourself, guys, you know, who do I have to become? What do I have to do in order to have the life I want, right? Be, do, have. You got to become the person that you need to become to do the things you need to do in order to have the life you want to have, right? So it doesn't, you can't just, you know, it goes back to the law of attraction. You can't just sit there and, and you know, visualize what you want. All of a sudden, magically, everything happens and not do anything. Yeah, the world will put circumstances and events and happenstances in your in your vicinity when you visualize things and you really meditate on it, but you still got to be that person. You still got to do the work in order to have the results that you have. So be, do, have, guys. All right, Tangi, next. So why are we doing this? Why am I coming on here giving you so much value, right? You know, because I'm doing this because I want to leave a legacy, guys. You know, I want to leave a legacy to not only my family, and my five beautiful kids and my wife, I want to help you, right? I want to help you. If, if, if I can, you know, maybe you, I meet with you at a seminar or, or a workshop or a mastermind or a convention or conference. You say, hey, Chris, I listened to that webinar two years ago. And man, you changed my life. Like you really put a fire, you know, in, in my butt. And I'm like, I really want to like, like you really helped me. That, that, that's a spiritual game for me, guys. Like if I can give back and by me helping you and, and giving you this content, it's going to help me too, right? But you have to do something with it, right? You got to realize you got to listen, you got to have a huge purpose, guys. This is my purpose, right? I want these kids right here to remember me. I want my, these kids, kids, you know, my grandkids to remember me. I want to, I want to wake up one day and I'm, you know, you know, I, I'm 150 years old. I'm dead and gone. And, you know, and my little middle baby right here in the top middle, he says, that's Arden. He's, he'll say, yeah, he's talking to his son or his, his, his grandson. But yeah, you remember Paul, Paul Rude, Chris Rude? Yeah. He, you know, he left his $200 million in, in assets and real estate. You remember that? That's what I want to remember, guys. That's how you leave a legacy. How do you get remembered forever? You do it through real estate. You know, can you do it through other businesses? Yes, but what are, what are the most what are the richest people do in this planet? They invest all their money into real estate. You look at the Rockefeller Center, Trump Towers, or uh, you know, all, what what are they doing? They all get remembered through real estate. The Hilton, right? You know, this is all real estate. So there's no better way to to leave a legacy for you and your kids than real estate and you should start with wholesaling guys this is the this is the the fundamentals of, of of real estate investing how to find a deal how to go direct to seller buy deeply discounted this is the golden goose guys so if you know if you're on the on the struggle bus right now the problem with you right now is that your purpose is not greater than your barriers listen i just said you gotta really soak this in you gotta have a purpose greater than the barriers you're gonna have to confront in life and in business because if your purpose is not greater than the barriers, you're going to fail because the barrier, you will have barriers when you start a business. You will have barriers when you start a real estate business, when you start a wholesaling business. It's going to be hard. That's why it makes a lot of money because it's hard. If you're not serious, then you're going to fall off, meaning your, your purpose is not greater than the barriers. I, don't, I could lose everything tomorrow. I'll do it all over again because my purpose is greater than my barriers. So the way you do that 
is like I said, go back through this webinar, personal development, working on yourself, all these different things, learn how to be a real estate investor, learn how to raise private capital, BSC triangle, um, so you can take down deals. Make sure you split test, measure, and adapt each marketing channel. You know, use Tangi like we do for, you know, for your letters and your um, pulling your list with the inheritance and, and foreclosures and the, you know, the um, code violations. That's what we're using her for right now in probate. I think it's probates, uh, foreclosures, uh, code violations, inheritance. That's the list we're hitting right now. You have to try all these different things and you're going to have to spend some money. It's going to take some courage. Like it's, you're going to have to spend money on marketing because in the, the day, guys, this is just a professional marketing business. That's all it is. You have to spend money on marketing. Now, if you don't have a lot of money, you're going to have to trade out a lot of time driving for dollars, putting out bandit signs, door knocking, handing out cards, networking with realtors, networking with um, attorneys or divorced attorneys or all these different people. So you can do it without money, but you're going to trade out a lot of time. But as soon as you get some money, reinvest that into your business, scale your business, and don't be scared to spend money. Next. So listen, so we're coming to the end of here. Now, I wanted to give you guys a few resources so you can if you don't have any money you're flat broke and you just want to learn more i have a free book i wrote the source of the deal it's all about wholesaling go to the you know the source of the deal.com and pick up your free book As a matter of fact it's right here the source of the deal if you want a hard copy you can go on amazon i think it's like 10 bucks or so 12 bucks but i have a free ebook right here the source of the deal.com so listen i share my whole life on on social media Everything we do, flipping, wholesaling, mobile home parks. If you guys that already follow me, you probably see a lot of my stuff um, if you follow me on social media. But go to, you know, you can go to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go to Instagram and follow me at Real Estate Rude. I give tons of content on, on my storyline. Like, I, I mean, you literally can almost do deals just off the content I get for free. Uh, go to Chris Rude Entrepreneur on Facebook and my uh, business page. I mean, me and my wife did an hour long. Facebook Live yesterday on, on you know, marriage and children and how to keep that going while you, you know, you're busy as an entrepreneur. And if you want to work with me, guys, if you want to work with me, I have a coaching program. Go to chrisroot.com, book a call. I'd love to help you guys. Um, with that said, you know, with the people that are on this webinar, if you, if you book a call and you want to join my coaching, I'm going to give you $500 off my group coaching. And all, all the packages I have, 500 bucks off up until tomorrow at this time, 24 hours. So you'll get $500 off if you want any of my coaching packages in the group and one-on-one. -on -one. In addition to that, um, the, first, the first two people that sign up for my coaching, I'm gonna give you two, I'm gonna give you guys a ticket to my event called Skillathon, December 6th, 7th and 8th in New Orleans. We're gonna have 16, 16 high level speakers. Some of these guys make a hundred million dollars. I got two guys. I got one guy that just sold a hundred million dollar business, Judge Graham. I got a, that's going to be speaking. I got another guy, Vic Tibness, who owns a hundred, hundred million dollar plus business in Florida. He's going to be speaking at my event. I got another guy who's 30 years old, just turned 30. He owns not one, but two eight figure businesses from Canada. He just won entrepreneur of the year. I'm going to have guys that are, that have flipped, you know, hundreds upon hundreds of houses. I'm going to be talking on wholesaling, mobile home parks, relationships, personal development. We're going to have guys on fasting. So if you're interested in coming to that event, it's called Skillathon. Uh, follow me on, on social media. I, I'm going to be posting links on where you can buy the tickets. But the first two people that get my coaching, you're going to get $500 off. And I'm going to give you a uh, giveaway two tickets to the event. No, Chris, that's going to be in New Orleans, right? Yes, New, New, or New Orleans, December 6th, 7th, and 8th. And last year you had it in Sandestin and I went to that and there was hundreds of people there. And let me tell you, that was the funnest three day event I think I've ever been to. Y'all had music going on and I think they made a, they made a rap video for you, all about yep. you and your business. And there was so many high powered speakers at that event. And it was just, it was, it was the funnest event I think I've ever attended. Yeah. And tangent, it wasn't just about wholesaling or real estate. I mean, we had, we had guys talking about multifamily. We had yep. guys talking about everything. Like it was, it was amazing. It wasn't just like, it's, it's more of a, you know, it was more of a personal development conference to be honest with you. I mean, cause you got, you got every aspect. I mean, we talked about marriage. We talked about, you know, raising private capital. It's, so you got, you can't just be a one trick pony guys. That's why I keep em emphasizing to you guys. Don't get stuck in wholesaling, learn the wholesaling game, master it, but evolve and adapt into, you know, learning how to wholesale, learning how to flip, learning how to raise private capital. 
and this is the things that I'm, I'm going to help you with at this event that I, that I'm going to hold. And on top of that, like I said, if you want more coaching, um, let me know, hit me up, follow me. And if, and if you can't afford anything, that's okay. A lot of people can't follow me on all these platforms and I will give you massive, massive content on how to you know, do better in life. Like I've got a lot of experience in real estate and entrepreneurship. Guys, I've almost went bankrupt twice in my early twenties when I was starting those shops. I mean, that, that's why you have to harden yourself for the ups and downs of business. That's why I'm so adamant about talking to you about personal development, because if you're not personally developed enough to handle the ups and downs of being an entrepreneur, guys, it hurts, it stings. And if you're not ready for it, it can cripple you mentally and emotionally. Well, Chris, I'm going to make sure, hey, and you guys, while you're on this call, take a picture of this because this is all of the information on how to get a hold in touch with Chris. I'm also going to email um, every single person on this call um, your contact information. That's on the slide right here, Chris, so they have that. And anything else you want me to email them as well. But this is how you get a hold of you. So what you're saying is by tomorrow, within 24 hours, you want to repeat that again? But by tomorrow, 24 hours, um, if, you, if you want coaching from me, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you five hundred dollars off of any of all of my courses. You know, all I say my course, my group coaching and my one on one, you'll get five hundred dollars off. And they'll so, find the, they'll find the prices of these where at one of these uh, links here. They'll have yeah they'll have, they'll have to book a call. You have to go to chrisreed.com and book a call and uh, talk with Darren. Um, the I can go over the prices if you want me to now. If, if, chrisreed.com and they'll schedule a call. Correct. Yeah, go to chrisreed.com or schedule a call. Um, and you know that Darren will go all, over all the prices, and I'm going to yeah, tell, tell them the prices, Chris. Why don't you go ahead and tell them yeah. the prices? So, so group coaching starts at two thousand for one month of coaching, and that's going to get you my fourteen and a half hour course, access to all my private coaching calls that we do once a week, access the, uh, to my private Facebook group where we do Facebook lives and we can talk. I've got hundreds of students across the country. And in addition to that, I do something that no other coach does. You have direct access to me meaning you can talk to me on an app called Voxer. It's a walkie talkie app and you can talk directly to me back and forth. Like, so you, you have a coach on demand with Chris Rude. So that's one month of coaching is 2000. So I'm gonna discount that all the way down to 1500. So that's a 25% savings right there for one month of, of, of group coaching. You'll have access to the, the hundreds of coaching calls that I've done. Matter of fact, Tangie's done a couple coaching calls with me. She knows the platform. We get a bunch of people on and we do Facebook lives and we give solid content. It all gets recorded inside my private Facebook group and you'll have all that content. And li literally, and it's not just wholesaling guys. Like I interview guys, you get access to my whole network. I interview guys on multifamily, flipping houses, um, land development, syndication, uh, raising private capital, like that. I interview different guys in, on different topics. So it's not just wholesaling. You know, if you hire me as a coach, you're going to become a real, excuse me, you're going to become a real estate investor. That's what I teach you. And you can lean on me for questions, not just involved with wholesaling, but with real estate investing and entrepreneurship mindset in general, personal development. Like I'm huge. Our coaching program is huge on personal development. So it, it's 2000 for one month. You'll get $500 off of that. Um, two months of that is $3,500. You get two months, uh, $500 off of that. Uh, three months is five grand. If you want more one-on-one -on -one with me, where you can just talk to me directly and you get to two days in my office. It's $10,000 for one-on-one, -on -one, six months. What you get with that is you get to come down to my office for two straight days, just me and you, and you get to hang out with me for two days, go on appointments, go and look at everything I've got, all the rental properties, the mobile home parks, come on appointments, talk to my acquisition guy. Where I saw the video of your wife cooking the guy's dinner at your bar and she cooked him all this Louisiana stuff and they were yep. Oh, and their, their mouths were water and you, your wife prepared all this food while they were there on their coaching, right? Yep. That's what we do. And the last day we cook awesome. a cuisine for you at my house. So it's, you get, you get treated like a king and you get to learn how a real estate operation works and how we live our life around real estate and how we make money through real estate. So that's why it's, it's so expensive. And it's not for everybody. It's not cheap, but you know, my time's not cheap. Um, so you, you get, you get access to that. Plus you'll get access to me one-on-one. -on -one. I'll give you, matter of fact, I'm going to give you guys, two thousand dollars off of that program because i know that's expensive somebody wants to do it and pull the trigger if you do the two the ten thousand i'm going to give you two thousand dollars off of that i'll let my sales guy know um it'll be eight grand for that and then i have a super high-end program to change it's not for everybody it's for people that are you know that probably got more money than, than they know what to do with and they just want my time and they want to learn everything i'm doing i have a one-on-one -on -one package for a year where you can call me anytime you want and you can come to my office anytime you want for a whole year 
plus you get two days at my beach house that I do a mastermind twice a year in Destin, Florida. You get two, two days, which the next one I'm doing is October, um, October 4th and 5th in Destin, Florida at my beach house. We're going to have a high level mastermind there. If you're interested in that, that's $3,000 by itself. You're going to get access to that and you get super VIP tickets to my event in New Orleans where you're going to be sitting front row, get treated like a king, all the VIP parties, networking with all the, the, the speakers, uh, backstage parties. Um, it, it's, it's, you, get, you get a real true firsthand experience of getting around high level people, all of my buddies that are doing big things. So that's a $25,000 package, one year of one-on-one. -on -one. Like I said, it's not for everybody. I don't recommend it if you're not serious or like really eager to deep dive real estate, so. Well, Chris, and they can find all that at www.chrisrude.com forward slash schedule, and they can schedule that call with Darren, right? That's right. Absolutely. Did you want to go ahead and open it up to Q&A? Yeah, let's, to... let's open it up. Let's open it up to Q&A. All right. So far, we've got uh, about 15 questions. Uh, one of the questions was, in the very beginning, is how accurate are our leads? Well, I think that if they stayed on the webinar the whole entire time, they probably know by now they're accurate because you've made a lot of money with our leads and still continue to, and your subscription is up to next year, you've got it paid up to. Um, so Chris yep. pays for leads just like everybody else, you guys. Chris has to spend money on his leads too. Our leads are very accurate. We're, we're taking them right from the courthouses. So whatever they have on there, it's just a copy and paste for us. And then we do the research to pull property appraisers data and uh, do the tax collector's information. So we go to about 20 different websites to compile all the information together for you. So they are very accurate. When it's fresh and raw, I mean, like you said, it, it's raw, like it's, it's instant. It's not like six months old data, like it's, it's new data. Now, now is every lead that Tanya is going to send you like going to be a deal? No. I mean, it's a numbers game, guys. You got to find motivation just like anything else. And, and it's a numbers game. So the more leads you get, the more chances you get of getting a deal. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. And consistency and patience is key. I mean, you got to want, yes. you want to do like a four to a six step mailing campaign. There's a lot of people out there these days, Chris, that just want a cold call. And I, I teach so many people. I'm like, you know, why pick one marketing channel and stick to it? I can't imagine why you'd want to do that. Let me, you know, they'll spend $2,000 on leads and then they'll just say, oh, I'm just going to cold call. Why are you limiting yourself to one marketing channel? It makes right. absolutely no sense whatsoever. Why would you not want to surround your seller by calling? That's like, you know, with, with Tangent, you know, I mean, to cut off, that's like trying to get a hold of a, you know, of a friend or even you're trying to get a girl and all you do is call her and you don't leave a message and you don't text her. You just call her. Yeah. Like I mean, when I call somebody, I'm calling them, leaving a message, and I'm texting them. Exactly. <laughs> I like to call that professionally pushy. <laughs> yeah, like professional pushy. I love that. <laughs> and uh, they want to know, Chris, too, uh, where did you get your leads when you first started out? Because you didn't know us when you first started out. So no, guys, believe it or not, I started my whole business with bandit signs. I started my whole business. Like, I, I was like the bandit sign Nazi king in, in where I live. Like, I literally got... I got uh, banned from the city because I put so many <laughs> bandit signs, but I made so much money. I didn't even care about the fines or anything. Like I just kept putting them out. Now I'm not advocating you go break laws or anything, but you can make a lot of money with bandit signs because um, they're affordable. Now here's the thing with bandit signs. They're cheap and they're very effective marketing because, you know, if a, if a motivated seller is calling a sign that says we buy houses fast cash, you know, they're, they're going to have a problem. That's going to be a really good lead. Um, the problem with that is it takes a lot of time to put those out. So you may, if you don't, if you have a full-time job and you can't put them out, then you may want to, you know, get somebody on Craigslist or something or a friend to go put them out and pay them, you know, 10, $12 an hour and have them put out 40, 50 of them a day for you. Right. Or maybe pay them a dollar a sign, you know, if you don't have the time, that's what I would do. But I mean, I had the time I was putting them out. I had other people helping me put them out. Um, but yeah, bandit signs, uh, networking with realtors, social media, do, do the things that are, um, you know, I would, I'd, I'd call for sale by owners uh, signs. I would, um, I'd use sticky notes. I'd get little sticky notes and I'd put, put them on the door. If I looked, if I saw a house that looked distressed, I mean, you just, you gotta, listen, this, this is a grind. There's a reason why, you know, I, I call my program hustle wholesaling. I didn't call it a passive wholesaling or easy wholesaling. Like this is a grind. This is a straight hustle. This is a hustle guys. It's a highly paid hustle. So if you don't have money, you're going to have to trade out time to go do all these different markets you drive. Oh, this is Chris's model. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it says skills gets the deals and it's on my phone. Yep, that's skills right. I got, the I got the hat on right here. Skills get the deals, guys. Like you got to know how to talk to people, right? I mean, yeah, you can have a lot of hustle, but it's, there's a few factors. You got to have 
you got to have really good negotiating skills. That's where my program, like that's what my whole program is based around. It's not really about how to wholesale because that's easy or the marketing. The marketing piece is easy. You can get hooked up with a girl like Tangie. They automate all that for you. They do it all for you. And it's, it's simple. What we don't actually do the mailings for you, Chris, but we just give them the marketing so that they can do the mailing. But right. we hook them up with the links to people who can get you cheap. I get when they buy our services, they get links to skip tracing services that'll do it for 15 cents. And they'll bring back like five to 10 phone numbers and five emails for 15 cents. So we can hook you up with that. And we can also hook you up with a printing company that'll do your uh, postcards for only 38 to 42 cents. And that's with postage. So we're, we've designed them already for you. So it's all set. So. Yeah, and that can all be automated. Like, you don't, once it's all, once you pay all these companies, they do everything for you. You just wait yep. for your phone to ring. You want to but delegate what, your minimum wage tasks. Yeah, exactly. So from there, it becomes a sales process. And a sales process is a, it's, it's a communication process and it's a skill set process. So you've got to be a highly evolved version of yourself. You've got to, you know, you've got to be able to negotiate. You've got to be able to build rapport. You've got to be um, persuasive. These are the things that I teach in my program. I'm all about the skills, guys. That's why my whole brand is skills get the deals. Because you, if you don't have the skill sets, I don't care how many. I can teach a monkey how to market. But all that marketing does is just get a lead in front of you, right? If you, once you get a lead in front of you, what are you going to do with it? If you, ain't got, if you don't have to talk to people, you're just going to waste all your marketing money. Learn how to talk to people. Learn how to negotiate. This is what the core values of my program is. It's all about people skills. Yes, I'm going to teach you all the marketing. I'm going to get you hooked up with, with Tangi and tell you exactly what list to pull and, and what's the best ones and, you know, how to do a Facebook ad or, you know, how to do a, you know, what to write on your bandit sign. Like I, I teach all that too, but that's really, that's, that's simple stuff. The real meat and potato is, is, the, is, the, is the communication skills. Now, Chris, I'm sure when they sign up for your program, you'll help them with the contracts and forms and everything they need as well, or? Yep, we got Facebook Lives. I've, I've done coaching calls on how to fill out the contracts. It's all done for, there's nothing, I've been doing this for so there's no, there's no question I haven't been asked. So like, it's, it's all, we, we've, we've got hundreds of coaching calls that we go over everything, direct mail, Facebook ads, SEO, PPC, how to put out bandit signs, how to door knock, how to, like, we went over everything, like how to handle rebuttals, what if, the, what if the homeowner says this? I've got literally two hours of back and forth with one of my top students where we go back and forth on almost every possible scenario of a rebuttal that, that you're going to get on, on uh, you know, if you say this, what they're going to say back to you, how to, how to build rapport, uh, how to be persuasive, like the whole nine yards. Okay. Well, we got about 22 questions. So um, um, we're, if, you, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask yeah, you this. Is that yeah, okay? Absolutely. Okay. What is the minimum you get into a wholesale deal for? Guys, you know, honestly, I've done a deal for, I've done a deal and only made 500 bucks, right? You know, I'm not going to like, I've gotten deals where like I thought it was going to make seven, eight grand. And then, you know, I, I showed the deal and every investor said, look, Chris, I, I can't give you more than this. Right. And it was like 500 bucks. So I'm not going to walk away from 500 bucks because that lead probably cost me 200 bucks or a hundred bucks. So yeah, I've made, but yeah, I give the, to answer your question, I try to make at least minimum 5,000 per deal. But um, on average, I'm making, I'm making on a wholesale deal, I'm making 10, 15 grand a deal. Um, although I had a phenomenal week, last week we did three deals. We made 100 and, 101,000 last week. We had a, a $70,000 apartment wholesale deal. I made a $25,000 wholesale deal and I made a, a $6,500 wholesale deal. So but on average, if I had to average it out, I think we're making, I think it's probably more like 12 to 15 grand per deal average. And then we hit a home run here and there on, on the hotels and flips where we make 30, 40, 50, 60 grand. But your, your minimum guy should be five grand. Okay, so I have another question. Uh, Barry says, I don't understand how wholesaling works. Do you need a good sum of money to get started? You don't need a big sum of money, but you do need some money. Um, I mean, cause I mean, if you don't have any money, you're going to have to do the hard heavy lifting of the actual physical work and you have to do a lot of it. You're going to have to trade out sweat equity for capital that you don't have to, to spend money. So you're going to have to do go door knocking. Um, and if you said you don't understand wholesaling, all wholesaling is, is the art or technology of finding heavily discounted off market properties for motivated sellers, getting those properties under contract heavily discounted and then selling your rights to the contract to an investor or end buyer for, for a fee of five, 10, 15 grand. That's the, so that's pretty much wholesaling. What you're going to have to do if you don't have any money is door knock, bandit signs, driving for dollars, cold calling. These are the things that are, that are going to, that you can do that are, 
they don't cost a lot of money, but they're going to require, they're still going to cost gas money, your time. So th there's no way around it. Like you're going to spend some money because if you're not spending money, you're spending your time. All right. Somebody, and I know you answered this question I'm about to ask during the call, but we had a bunch more people drop, uh, jump on afterwards. And so it might be a different person. What is the difference between wholesaling and hoteling? So wholesaling is, is, is selling a property to an investor who's actually buying a tip for a real rental property. They're going to flip it. And then wholesaling is where you actually close on a property. Now it has to meet a criteria. I talked about it earlier in, in the live. It has to meet a certain criteria that it can't be that messed up. It's just got to be a, a dated house, meaning it's outdated, but it's in a good neighborhood, a desirable neighborhood and a days on market, meaning how long it sits before it sells is typically less than or around 30 days or less. And what I'll do is I'll put it on, I'll, I'll buy it and close on it and throw it back on MLS. MLS is the multiple listing services with a realtor and I'll discount it super low, way below what it's worth. Like I did that deal in Baton Rouge, it priced for 258 and we sold it for 238. We gave the buyer a $20,000 discount. He was buying it to live there. So we just discounted it to a full retail buyer versus if I'd have wholesale that and sold it to an investor, I probably would only made 10, 15 grand, maybe 20. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm sure if she has more questions, she'll, she'll ask. Um, she's on here a couple of times. Now, Danny wants to know the, your biggest, biggest hurdle are leads and funding. Can you explain how to get both? Well, we know how to get leads. That's from me. And as well as the band that we talked about. Leads. Yes. I mean, leads and funding. So leads is, is, a, is a marketing game. It's, it's, a, or it's, a, it's, a, it's a money game in a sense that you have to spend money to market. There's no way around it. Like if you want to play with the big boys and you want to make a lot of money doing this, you're going to have to spend a lot of money on marketing. There's no way around that. Otherwise you're going to trade out a lot of time to get leads. And most people that sort of have to trade out a lot of their time, they got to go and door knock. They got to go and cold call. They got to go and do driving for dollars. Um, so it's, it's one or the other. If you have a lot of money, I talk about this in my book too. You can read up on it. If you have a lot of money. You can pay for your leads. If you don't have a lot of money, you're going to have to go hustle for your leads. Now the funding side of it, that's, that's a relationship business too. You're going to have to go and, and actually talk to people in your area or your neighborhood. And maybe everybody's got a rich uncle or somebody they know that's got some money. And there's actually nationwide funding uh, companies out there that you can go out to and reach out to. But if you don't have good credit, they may not want to fund your deals. But if you have an uncle that's got a lot of money or you, you, you have somebody that you know that has a lot of money, go show them the value of what you do. Show them, hey, look, I'm a you know, I'm a professional deal find. I wouldn't say I'm a professional wholesale. I say, hey, look, I'm a professional deal find. Like I, I find heavily discounted deals with lots of equity. Would you want to invest in some of my deals? And I'll give you a, a cut of it, you know, and show them the deal. Bring a spreadsheet. Look, Mr. Uh, Mister Investor, I got this deal for a hundred thousand. Uh, I pulled all the comps. It's worth 220. And it only, and I had a, a contract to come out here and give me a quarter. It only needs 40 grand worth of work. That means we can make 70 grand on this deal. Would you want to, partner up with me and invest in this deal and I'll give you, you know, $10,000 of the profit or whatever y'all can negotiate. Maybe he wants, you know, 15, 20, who cares, but it's better than not getting the deal at all. Right. But that's, it's just about building relationships. Right. And he's got to trust you, but the way you get him to trust you is you show him the deal. Don't tell him about the deal, show him the deal on paper, show him the, the numbers. And, and he'll probably want to verify that. That's how you're going to build up trust and rapport with these cash, these people that have money that can invest in your deals. Okay. Well, let's move on. We've got about 15 more questions. Um, actually, 20 questions in 15 more minutes. Um, Vicki wants to know mobile home parks. She loves the idea of mobile home parks for income, but it's a risk since other investors buy the parks and build. She wants your thoughts on this. I didn't, I didn't catch the last part. Investors do what? So she likes the idea of mobile homes for income, but it's a risk. Other investors buy the parks and build. So she wants your thoughts on that. If another investor builds a park on the side of you? I guess and it says mobile home parks. I like the idea of mobile homes for income, but it's a risk since other investors buy the parks and build. Thoughts on this trend question mark? Maybe okay, you can I think, ask the question in a I, different way, Vicki. We don't, yeah. Um, yeah. I think I understand the question. She's worried about competition of, of maybe a, another builder building on the side of them. That's not true. There's a nationwide moratorium on building brand new mobile home parks right now. It's really hard to get approved to build a new mobile home park. So, and even if that person, that investor was building a brand new mobile home park, here's the thing, his, his investment is going to be so huge versus you. I show you how to find direct to seller mobile home parks off market. So you buy them wholesale prices, just like you would a single family home. 
I use the same wholesale model to, to find, you know, mobile home parks. So you're going to buy super discounted for motivated mobile home park sellers and you're going to capture tons of equity while this other investor builds a brand new and has tons of overhead. He's going to have to charge way more than you to make up his investment. So that is, I think that probably answers your question right there. Okay. Uh, her other question is a 60, 40 split in another market, 40 you 60 agent. She said, are you bringing the dollars as lender JV? No, I, I get 60, they get 40. You get 60, they get 40. Okay. Yep. yep. All right. Um, another one, uh, Danny says, bro, you slide on mobile. Oh, your, your slide on mobile home pro pros and cons was back. Okay. We already know that. Thank you so much. We appreciate yep. that. Yeah. yeah he said, I, that, I said that when I was on there. I, yeah, you did. Uh, but I think he said that before you said that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Danny also wants to know, what do you think about companies like that do hard money and hard money to start out in general? Are you, what do you think the hard money starting out in general is good? Yeah. Listen, I mean, you can, and there's some hard money lenders out there that don't even check credit. They look at the deal, like they're, they're professional investors too. So they'll look at the deal and they'll know if there's meat on the bone, I mean, there's equity in the property and they'll fund your deal. But like, it's usually like three, three points um, and 10%, 9%, sometimes 12% or more, right? Maybe 13, 14%. But here's the thing, guys, if you've got enough uh, squeeze, or how they say it, squeeze in the, in the juice or the squeeze in the, on the lemon, who cares, right? Pay the points, pay the high interest is better than making no money. You know, you're going you're gonna to give the hard money lender $10,000 on a deal that you make 50 grand on or 40 grand on. So what? You, it, it's, you, can't, you can't look at it from that point of view. All right. So Nick says that he needs a wife. Because you're saying how important it is to have the partnership, I guess. Man, he's looking for the wife. You to, then you need to start going to the gym, man. Working out. If you need a wife, start taking care of care of yourself. Get some manicures. Work out fast, man. Get get lean and and uh, get get to do some personal development. Build up your confidence. That'll you'll attract more women into your life. <laughs> um, Danny says I work offshore. Do you think it's realistic to wholesale and buy and flip while I'm at work 14 days while I maintain until I make enough to leave? Yeah, you, you, I would get a partner in that in that uh, in that scenario situation. Definitely, you can, it's definitely doable. I know guys that work in corporate America, working like 80, 90 hours a week, and they're still doing it on the side. They just have partners. Okay. I put if I was him, if I was him, I'd put up the money for the marketing, and then have your partner do all the heavy lifting. You 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 spend the money on marketing. You you buy the house, spend the money on rehab. And when you come in, you can go manage him and make sure he's doing his job and make him do all the work. And y'all do a 50-50 split. Okay, good. I, good. Thank you. Um, Nick says uh, he can't take a screenshot of Zoom. So take your phone, Nick, is what I was saying is take your phone and take a picture of it. But it's okay, because if you're on this call, and you gave a valid email, you're going to get a copy of Chris's slide here with all of his uh, reach outs. Um, how much are the courses? Well, you went over that that question was asked at eight o'clock. Um, well, I, I don't know if you went over it. But basically, Chris, um, just real quick, I think that your smallest course was a couple thousand. Yeah, group group coaching is is two thousand all the way to five thousand. If you want one month, two months, or three months, uh, you're gonna get five hundred dollars off of that. Um, and then um, one on one is ten thousand for six months. You're gonna get two thousand off of that. And then I have a super high end one on one where you get the whole shabam. That's twenty five grand. Like I said, that's not for everybody, but you get not super for a whole VIP. year. That's a whole year of one on one coaching coming down to my office two or three times, coming out to my mastermind at my beach house, and coming and getting. Uh, okay. super at my all the way from a couple grand all the way up to 25 it just depends on what level you want but i can tell you right now chris is available constantly this man is working till late at night i've been on live calls with him listening to his coaching and his wholesaling group he has such a close knit tight niche group with his wholesaling group they're like his family he takes very good care of anybody who goes under his wing yep um chuck wants to know is south carolina avail on a, you're avail yes we can do a lot of different things in south carolina absolutely um now we got another question. How much are the leads? Um, depends on what you want, but they range from $599 for a quarterly subscription. Um, and that's probates every single week. Chris, you know, they come out every Wednesday, you get new probate leads. Um, and yeah. nobody else is, everybody else is quarterly. And it's about 599 bucks for three months. And that's a discounted rate, but we do have a special going on right now. We've got anybody on this call, you're going to get 30% off for, for purchasing between now and the end of the week or if you want one county, but if you want two counties, we're going to do a buy one, get one free and the list price, which ends up being cheaper uh, than two counties on the discounted rate. So uh, that's, 
So it goes from $5.99 all the way up to $1,750 on the, um, the um, pricing for the leads. But we do recommend at least a six month, if not a year. Six months is $9.99 a year. Is $1,750, and those are all discounted rates. So, uh, but you, you reach back out to me. I'll be emailing you guys some information about the leads too. So, and that'll be all in the email as well. And I also have a webinar that I'll just uh, send you the replay on that you can watch of me as well. Um, where do I go to order the leads? Albert, you can just call me directly. My phone number is 813-563-0005, extension two. Uh, that's eight, or you can reach me on my cell. It's 863-698-3550. I'm typing it in right here, but I'm also going to email you afterwards a sign up form. So if anybody wants to sign up for the leads, you can fill it out, scan it, and send it right back. Uh, Vicki says she's losing connection. Uh, we hope you got back on, Vicki. Charlie Harrison, uh, Chris, what have you been? Okay, Chris, what have been your best two to three marketing channels for leads? Two to three. Um, PPC has been my has been my probably my best. Um, followed by SEO, then Facebook. Well, no, PPC, Facebook, SEO, and then direct mail. Uh, okay. Those four channels. Those have been my four best right there. Okay. Now, if you had to pick the best leads that you're using with us, what would it be? It depends on what market. You know, Florida. The code violations are killing it right now. They are. Uh, mm -hmm. um, with uh, the the, the, the area in Panama, um, and then in Lafayette and Baton Rouge, I would say it's the probate and pre-probate. Okay. Um, Vicki, did you get my mobile home question? Okay, she got disconnected, so she never got to hear your answer on her mobile home question. Uh, did you get my mobile home question? I got disconnected. Why buy mobile homes if others investors are buying parks and they're building on the land? That's what she's saying. Yeah. Yeah, so like I said, there's a nationwide moratorium. It's super hard to build brand new parks. I mean, really, it's almost virtually impossible, so I wouldn't worry about that. And even if they could, their overhead and costs is going to be so expensive that they're going to have to charge so much more than you and then for rent to, to better reap their investment that the park that you buy, if you go and direct the seller and you, you buy it at the wholesale price, you're going to be fine. I wouldn't worry about that. I've never, ever worried about that. Never even had that happen. Danny says, what's a minimum on multifamily or larger scale wholesaling other than single family? So when I'm buying multifamily, I only buy 24 units or more. Um, and then this, the second question, what was the second question about wholesaling? So um, the second question about wholesaling, what's the minimum on multifamily or larger scale wholesaling other than single family? I've wholesaled, I have a commercial building right now. I'm wholesaling, I'm making 55 grand. And guys, you can wholesale anything. I mean, I've wholesaled raw land. I mean, obviously I wholesale the majority of single family homes, but I just wholesaled a 62 unit apartment complex. I've wholesaled at a storage unit before. Uh, I'm wholesaling, like I said, a commercial building. It's what, it's all about, it's arbitrage, right? All wholesaling is arbitrage. Buy at one price, sell at another price. Okay, we still have about 15, 13 more questions. So yeah, yeah, let's roll. Uh, how large is the wholesale, your wholesale operation, Chris? Would you say it's automated and streamlined at this point? In, in the markets that I'm in, outside of mine, yes, they're completely automated. I don't do anything. You know, that the leads come in, they get filtered for motivation and equity and uh, location, and then they get quarterback to all of my partners in those markets. They do everything after that. They work the lead, they get it closed. We make a decision after we get in a contract, if we wholesale it, that's when I get involved. If, if we're gonna buy it, then I have, to, I have to do the final approval if I wanna take my money and buy it. Um, I have to check that off. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much wholesaled. And I mean, you, you, can't, you can't automate 100, when you're on a business, you always have some, you're gonna be involved some way or another. Like, yeah, I don't do all the heavy lifting anymore. I do still look at deals on the multifamily side, because I mean, I'm buying it. Like that's a huge purchase I'm buying. Right now we have $9.2 million, I'm sorry, $7.2 million worth of mobile home parks in the contract right now. I'm the only guy that can go look at that. Like I'm not gonna send my team out because it, I'm signing the, 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 the note for the bank, you know? So, but on the wholesale side, yes, in all the markets, the five markets that I'm in, besides the Lafayette local market, that's all automated in the sense that I'm not doing any of that. I can't draw, I can't be in five markets at one time, but I'm still heavily involved in my business. I love, listen guys, I love being in the game. Like I'm not a passive, you know, kind of business guy. I like to be in the game. It keeps me sharp. It keeps me to where I, I'm, I'm a good coach because I, if I can't, how am I supposed to coach students if I don't, if I'm not doing the game anymore, right? So I mean, I'm 37, you know, I'm not trying to not be involved, but for the most part, yes, but I'm still heavily involved in the business. 
I'm, I'm a control freak and that's why I'm successful. That's why my business is successful because I keep an eye on everything like a hawk. Okay. Um, what is the best marketing channel? Lewis wants to know. I think you may have answered that, but real quick. In my opinion, and it's PPC. Okay. And that's paid per click. Yep. Pay per click. Okay. All right, Vicki says no. Investors are buying out parks and evicting owners and then building apartments. Investors are buying out owners and then yeah. evicting. Vicki's the one that was asking the question about mobile homes. Yeah. And her response to you, I guess, was no. Investors are buying out parks and evicting owners and then they're building apartments. Oh, they're evicting. Oh, they're evicting the uh, the, t the the tenant if they're just doing lot rent, meaning they don't yeah. own the trailers. The tenant trailers yeah i've never seen that happen i'm sure it can happen if it's in a good enough location they may do that but um your what's the question are you like what can i do about that i think she so, was just say making a statement that that's i got you making wrong. a statement okay yeah. yeah yeah i'm sure that happens especially if it's in a good location uh, i haven't seen it happen in in my experience we're gonna have to cut the questions off after these guys we got 10 11 questions we gotta we're gonna ask them and then we're gonna cut that off anything else you want to know you can reach out to chris and i uh, how, how many people do you have on your team, Chris? Right now we have, it depends on what department. I mean, cause I have a huge, I have, you know, right now we're at, we're at almost $22 million in, in holdings on the, on the portfolio side, the holding side, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six people that help me on for the manage all the, the prop. Well, actually we got more than that. If you take in my, my um, beach house, uh, uh, we probably got about 10 people on the holding side that manage the, the portfolio. And then on the acquisition side, as far as the wholesaling, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We got seven on the uh, on the acquisition. Seven to eight. The range between seven to eight. We're always hiring and firing. So seven to eight on the wholesaling side. Okay. Uh, Lewis Brown, what's an ideal way? If someone puts up all the money and I do the fixer-upper work with a contractor team, how much profit should I share with them? Or how much should I negotiate for them giving me money to do a deal? If you're not doing any work and you're putting up all the money, are you finding the deals too? As he says, he's finding the deals. He says, what's an ideal way if someone puts up all the money and I do the fixer upper. Oh, okay. He didn't say 50. he was finding it. He didn't say who was finding yeah. it. I, I'd say 40 to 50%. Okay. You should give him 40 to 50%. Yep. Okay. Oh, uh, Frank says, congratulations on your success, Chris. Thank you, man. I appreciate uh, that. And guys, if you have questions, you can don't hit me up after this. Inbox me on Instagram and uh, at Chris Rude Entrepreneur and Real Estate Rude. Like I, I, I answer questions all day long. I'll help you. Um, Danny says thanks for the advice. You are you are very informative. Um, Frank says, how many hours should I put in on wholesaling if I work sixty hours a week at a full time job? Minimum, you're going to need at least ten, fifteen, preferably at least twenty. Ferris. Sorry about that. And then was Ferris 15 to 20 a week. Yep. Okay. Any, somebody just said any state question mark. Uh, we're, I don't know what you're asking, but we're nationwide with our leads and yep. I don't I really don't know what they were asking. I think that's what they're asking. Uh, can leads be purchased by the list in, instead of a monthly subscription? Yeah. If you purchase like a uh, a la carte leads, such as absentee owners, high equity, unknown equity, free and clear. Yeah, we, we sell them like a thousand for 500 and the difference between us and companies like list source us leads list you know a lot of companies out there and i'm not naming other companies like that but i'm just saying other companies in general some sometimes they'll buy their list like 10 years ago and they'll just resell them over and over and over and over to thousands of investors we don't do that with our absentee owners we order them brand spanking new the first time you order them so when you get them thursday a thousand leads they're never been ordered before by us ever brand spanking new um, so that's the question on that. So you can order quantity on cer certain things, but no, probates are weekly and fresh unless you order back data, which by the way, back data is very good. And when you buy a list, you should consider back data and going forward data. Uh, it just helps give you a kickstart to help you get a deal now. Uh, Albert, I have your email. Um, I'm not, I don't have a way to write that down now. So just, you can email me, tangi at foreclosuresdaily.com. And that is tangi at foreclosuresdaily.com. So email me if you want to, Al, there you go. I just typed the answer. Um, it's done. What software are you using for your phone system, Chris? We use CallRail and we use um, Google Voice. Um, 
and it's, I'm assuming that's what they're, they're asking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What is the discount on the leads again? And one of okay. So the discounts till Friday, you get 30% off a list price. If you want one County. And then if you want two counties, it's a buy one, get one free um, on the list price. So, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. 30% off till Friday, one County and buy one, get one free until Friday on the list price. Um, we're almost done with questions, Chris. Albert, she wants to know yeah, why. Good, and, what's that? Hit, hit them all. I, I'm, I'm good. She wants to know why invest in parks if investors are building on parks. If, if, if investors aren't building parks? Are. So basically what she's saying, why would she invest in mobile home parks if investors are just tearing them down and building up apartments on them? Why would she invest well, in them? Well, that's a double question. I mean, if you own the park, how is somebody going to come? That's what I'm it? thinking. Yeah. If, you, if you're buying the park and you own it, nobody's going to tear it down because you own it. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah, you, you're good. If you own it, you, you, nobody can take it from you. Yeah. So maybe, we, maybe we're confused on that. <laughs> question i'm not sure do, do you do leads on any state we're, we're nationwide all of our leads you can get pre-probates nationwide some counties we can't get certain information from but we can get pre-probates all over the whole entire nation and the pre-probate just basically means somebody died last week we verified there's real estate attached and we give the lead to you this week the benefit of using a pre-probate is not only will you be first at the door but sometimes they'll inherit the property via a trust and you could possibly buy that now so you're kind of beating everybody to the punch um so Louise, yes, I find the deal. Okay, no. Thoughts on cold calling? Cold calling works. It's a grind. It's a super grind, but it's very inexpensive. Um, but you will wear yourself out very fast cold calling. But it works. Um, I, I you can start you start off with cold calling doing it yourself to get rolling, but once you get some money, it's better just to either do in-house cold calling and hire a team, but we're always going to cycle through people. They're always going to quit every three months. And you have to hire new people. It's probably, and once you get enough money, it's better just to hire a, a, uh, a company that does it professionally and pay them a lot of money and be done with it. That's what I do. Okay. What is an SEO? Search engine optimization. So on, on online stuff, you've got PPC, which is the paper ad, the paper click pay, uh, paid ads. That's the first search when they pop up. If you type in sell my house fast, then underneath that, you have all the websites of all the different companies. So depending on how you're SEO'd, meaning how you're ranked, you could, I'm, I'm number one in most of my, the markets I'm in. Um, so they, you're like the first, the first one underneath the paid ads as far as your website. Okay. Your wife says that you are the GOAT in wholesaling. And she's not just saying that because she's your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. I love your wife. Your wife's great. I met her at your conference last year and we just, she's my, you know, she's my biggest supporter. You know, she really is. She's, she's a great. big reason why you got to get your wife involved that you love when involved guys, your, your journey's going to be so hard doing this. Just anything entrepreneurship. If you ain't got somebody constantly supporting you, you know, it's tough. You need somebody, you need a cheerleader in the background when you're having a bad day or things just aren't going your way. And your wife is their biggest fan. I met her at the event and she is awesome. She is 100% behind you. And you guys, and you guys are both what you bought. Actually, you walk equally, but you guys are both amazing. I watch her Facebooks all the time and she's very inspiring. Thank you. And Chris, uh, Steve Lundy says you are very inspiring. Thank you. Uh, Frank says, Hey, Chris, just, just subscribe to your YouTube. Thanks for all your advice on here. Awesome. So uh, thank you, Chris, from Louise Brown. Steve Lundy, what CRM are you using? Believe it or not, guys, I use just Google Calendar. And my team uses Google Calendar. I want simple, stupid. I don't need it to scratch my elbow and, and send out a, a happy face and do an automatic email blast. Like, I keep things simple. I'm, a, I'm from South Louisiana. Like, I don't want a bunch of technology. This is a simple business. We write it down in a pen and paper when the leads come in qualify the lead. If it's a good lead, it gets uploaded into a follow-up campaign onto Google Calendar and everybody can see it. It's simple. <laughs> you I don't love need Google. To... Huh? Yeah, it's I simple. I love Google. You, you got like, you got people using Podio and you got to have a, you have to have an engineering degree just to understand Podio. You got to, you know, be a rocket scientist and know how to split atoms just to understand Podio. Like you don't, it ain't that complicated, you know? So uh, we use Google Calendar. It's very simple. It, it reminds you when the when the next follow-up, you can type in whatever you want. It pops up when it's time to call them again. And you make yourself okay. note. So. Well, Vicki popped back up to clarify her mobile home question. 
The mobile home question originally was, more specifically, if I want to invest in one, two, or three mobile homes to fix and rent, mm. not the entire park, ah. how can the how can the park will remain not get bought out by a big investor? Ah, you know, oh, I now understand. Okay, I'm glad now I understand. Okay, this is happening to a guy that I bought just bought a park from. So that I bought a 24 unit in Dusan, Louisiana, and we're rehabbing it right now. We're just about done. A guy in there owns five trailers. I own the whole park, but he owns five trailers, and then he rents them out to tenants. Oof. Uh, I'm kicking him out, and he's selling me all the trailers. So, okay. yeah, so that can happen. So you're going to make a deal with him, obviously, and it has to be a deal that he wants to accept. What if, yeah. what if he didn't make a deal, Chris? I, then I can kick him out, and he'll, he'll just, he has to move his trailers out within 30 days. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, JR says, what are your partner's roles in each of the markets you're wholesaling in? So basically, they're, they're, most of them are realtors, are, are really experienced wholesalers and flippers. They, um, they're in charge of, you know, once my team qualifies the lead, we, we throw it to them. From there, they work the lead to get it under contract. And once we get under contract, we make a decision if we're going to buy it to flip it or wholesale or if we're just going to wholesale it. If we're going to just wholesale it, then it's up to them to get it sold. They have to, they start picking up the phones and, and calling investors to come look at it, to sell it. If we decide we're going to just flip it, then they have to manage the rehab. So are they it's, acting as acquisition managers, he said? And this, they do both. They do acquisition and dip, disposition from the ground. Perfect. What are your, why are you better than list source, Tangie? Well, because like I said, a lot of companies out there from what I am told, is purchasing a bulk amount of leads, let's say 10,000 absentee owners, and they're selling that list over and over and over and over to hundreds and thousands of investors all these years. From what I'm, from what I'm told, we, I can only speak for us, we buy our, we, we get our list and sell it to you, and you get it brand spanking new, never been ordered before when it comes to bulk lists like absentee owners, free and clear. We don't resell them over and over and over and over. We don't do that. Um, do I, do you recommend pr Privy, Chris, Privy? Privy? Privy, what do they do? Heard of that? P -R -I -P -R -I -V -Y? Never heard of them. Never heard of that either. Maybe Louise, um, can you clarify what you mean by that? We're not really sure what that means. Do you recommend Privy? So we'll come back to that. Uh, she is referring to renting out a single mobile home to, yes, we, she does not own. She's referring to renting out a single mobile home to, well, we have a lot of people telling us what Vicki's referring to. So I think we've, we've, we've got her question answered. She's referring to the renting out a single mobile home to a tenant in a park she does not own. Yep. Then the yeah. mobile park owner sells the park, which gets torn down and redeveloped to a higher, yes. We, yep, she would lose it, absolutely. If she doesn't own the land and she just owns the trailer and she's sub renting it out to somebody else, yes, she has, she's running the risk of, I wouldn't do that. I mean, I, I would, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to own the, the park and the land itself, not just a few trailers in there that I'm renting out because you're, you're leaving your, yourself open to exposure. Okay. Vicki just followed you on Instagram. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris, for sharing. You're awesome. Will, Willow, Willita says, uh, Danny says, Chris, throwback question, cash money or no limit? If you from the South and real, you know what's up. <laughs> I know he's on <laughs> so cash money or no limit cash money or no limit um if you're from the south and you and you real you know what's up i'd say no limit okay uh two questions left uh chris how old were you when you started wholesaling full-time and how long did it take you to get your first deal i started wholesaling five years ago full-time and it took me from the, well, I, I, I learned how to wholesale, like right when I learned about wholesaling, because I just watched a few YouTube videos and I kind of figured it out. But for me to actually start doing a lot of deals, it took me 30 days from the time I hired my first mentor. Once I did my first deal, I hurry up and hired a mentor. And then 30 days from there, like I implemented all the information, took massive action. And I started making, that's when I started making a lot of money. Yeah, that's what he wanted to know is, did you have a mentor to help you scale your business and scale up? Yeah, I mean, look, guys, you can get a lot of information on YouTube and all these, but and all these like me follow me on Instagram, but all the but the real meat and potatoes and the little nuances of how you run the business is going to really be shortened up and curtailed when you have a mentor, when you can just pick up a phone and send me a Voxer message and I can answer you know, questions on the spot. 
it's not going to be life-changing information. It's going to be small little bits. It's going to be about a dozen golden nuggets that are going to help you just scale and bust through that uh, one to one and a half, two deals every other month kind of deal flow versus doing four or five deals a month, six, seven, eight. I, listen, guys, I've got, I've got clients that are millionaires now. I've got students that are making a million dollars a year. So that maybe that may be you, but it, it takes commitment. It takes strategy. It takes, uh, you know, a lot of hard work and, and you working on yourself. So. Okay. Well, Chris, that that's all we have. And uh, gosh, it's been great having you on. And I, thanks for taking the extra time tonight. I know we had a set time to stop and you went over and you were glad to do it. And we thank you for all of your knowledge. I have one more that just came in. I have a mentor to help me with wholesaling, but he is in another state. How can I maximize the help if he's not physically here? Get a local, get a local mentor. I mean, if he's not there, um, but he should be able to coach you over the phone. I mean, obviously one-on-one -on -one coaching, that's why you get it's so expensive to get me one-on-one. -on -one. You come fly into life and come mentor, like hang up, hang out with me for two days. Nothing's going to be, you want to be, it's proximity to power, right? You want to have proximity to power, meaning people that are doing big things. So if you can get around somebody locally and, and shadow them and mentor them, locally right next to them that's actually that's going to be way more powerful than doing it you know, across state lines but chris you you mentor nationally i mean i'm on your facebook lives at nine o'clock at night and you're still talking for hours to your your students and they're national you're national yeah yep. through facebook live so i mean we we talk i mean you, you can you can hire me i mean we're, we're just we're going to do facebook lives we're going to talk on on foxer i mean so it, it's you can come hang out with my office but i mean i give lots of value guys like i mean it's 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 real. It's one on one, but not. I, I, I. There's no. I'm telling you right now. There's not a coach that gives more value and gives more service and more time than me. Zero, none, and has more credentials. Like most of these, I'm not beating up other wholesale coaches, guys. But if you're looking to hire a coach, do your research. Most guys teaching this are just wholesalers. I'm a professional investor. I own 22 million dollars worth of real estate. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 22 years old. Right. I've got. A, I'm very seasoned. Right. So make sure you don't just hire, you don't want your end goal should not just to learn wholesale. Yeah. You want to master wholesaling, but guys, you want to become a professional real estate investor, not just a wholesaler. You want to evolve. So make sure you hire somebody that can help you with the whole turnkey aspect of becoming an investor. Yeah. And Chris, I would think if they're in the same area, they might consider you a competition. Like Lewis is saying, if you get a local mentor, they might think of you as competition. You know, Chris isn't like that. Chris's students have called me from his own local area and bought the same counties he uses. And, yep. under, and Chris referred him to me. So, I mean, Chris is not yep. a scared of competition. And if you have a coach that thinks that way, then they're not, they're not going to be a good coach for you. No, there I, is. I highly recommend you coaching with somebody on a national level if that's the case and you're worried about that. Yep. Um, Instagram. Okay, next webinar, can you walk through a contract set up via wholesale deal or post it on something? Facebook, maybe? I don't know. Post it somewhere. Next webinar, can you walk through a contract set up via wholesale deal? We are going to have Chris back on a webinar next year for sure. If, he, if he'd like to do that, we would love to have sure. him. Absolutely. And again, you can follow him on all of his sources that he left out there for you and reach out to him and schedule some coaching. You know, it sounds like that, that'll definitely help you out. And Chris is not going to leave you hanging. His reputation is everything. When you get, when you get hooked up with a mentor or a coach, just remember you guys, their reputation is everything. And, and you're coaching you is, is their reputation hanging on the line. So they've got to do what's right. And they're going to step up to the plate because I mean, if you, they can't have anybody speaking bad things out there about them. You know, Chris is going to take care of you. That's right. Uh, Lewis says thinking of getting Raphael Vargas as a mentor thoughts, question mark. I mean, Raphael's a lot different style than, than I am. Um, you know, Raphael likes to try to close people over the phone. And Raphael is a great guy. He does a lot of deals, but he's not a, he's not a true real estate investor. He's a, he's the professional wholesaler. So if, if you want to learn wholesaling, I can teach you everything Raphael's teaching. He does have a different style than me. Um, he teaches more phone sales and closing people over the phone. I like to, we, we like to close people over the phone, but not actually close them, meaning send them contracts right then and there. We want to go to the appointment because the magic is made at the appointment. You're going to capture way more equity when you go meet them in person versus trying to who's, I mean, think about it. If somebody's competing with me, if I go to meet them at their house and build rapport and sit down with them for 30 minutes, who do you think is going to get the contract? Somebody that's in person with them or somebody trying to close somebody over the phone. Yeah. Both ways work, but my way is going to capture more equity. It does take a little bit more time. It depends on, look, it just depends on your style. Follow him. I mean, he's, he's got a totally different style than me. He's a lot, lot more flamboyant and 
over the top. I'm more. Yeah, I mean, Chris is never going to say anything negative about another coach. Yeah. Um, and yeah. he wants to know too, what about Peter Sol Sol Solaris from Boldwell? No, uh, I know a Peter Vexerman. But that's the only Peter I know that's a coach. Hmm. The thing, right. guys, the thing about me, if you hire me, you get, you're going to get somebody that's, I'm, I'm almost 40 years old. Like I'm seasoned. Like I've been in Australia my whole life. I own a bunch of real estate. I've been married for 20 years. I have five kids. I've owned multiple businesses. There's no other real estate coaches that, that have done it. I, I had the biggest oil change in mechanic business in my town for 12 years. You're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. Yeah. yeah. I'm a business owner, guys. Like I know how to, I'm an entrepreneur. I know how to run a business. Yeah. Well, uh, thoughts on all in people, Carlos Reyes, Sal and Alexis. Well, like we, like he said, you know, you, you, it's your preference on who you want to use, but he's wanting thoughts in general on other coaches. And I think naming I mean, it one by one, I don't know. You yeah. Know. Carlos and those guys, once again, they're professional wholesalers, just like me. They teach just wholesaling. I don't teach just wholesaling. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a turnkey guy, personal development, working on yourself, mind, body, spirit, wholesaling, whole, uh, flipping, buying whole with mobile home parks. I'm, my, my course, actually, I'm about to upload about five six hours more of content on how to be a real estate investor not just wholesale like we're going to show you how to do section eight housing with single family homes um HUD, how homes. To, hud homes right how to do hud homes I, I have a bunch of hud homes that we do that we do that with the trailer park so you get you get a lot more you get i'm more of a dynamic guy i'm more of a dynamic investor i'm not a one trick pony those guys are just strictly wholesalers now they're like i said they're very flashy online and that's their style if that reverberates with you or and that's your style and you like that, you go with your gut, guys. Like, I'm not sitting here telling you I'm better or worse than it. But I'm, well, I don't want to say that. I want to tell you, yeah, I am a better coach than they are. Because like I said, I'm more seasoned. I'm more, um, I own more real estate. None of those guys own the real estate I have. I mean, I have three, you know, I own three personal homes. I got two beach houses. I, I you know, I, I live in a million dollar house. I mean, so you just have to see, you know, what do you want? Like, do you want, do you want somebody that's, that's like that. That's that. That well, kind of Chris, stuff. I got a student on the line right now. Would you like to hear what he has to say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is a student that just joined your program. Now his name is Eric Bryan, and he says, yeah. "I have been in Chris's program for only one month. I went through two other programs before joining, and I'm here to tell you, Chris is the best that there is. Period." There you go. That's from the horse's mouth. There you go. Appreciate and, that. Uh, Thoughts on the, we know you appreciate that, Chris. Thank you. And, and you had no idea what that comment was going to be. I, I, I didn't, Good or bad, you were ready. <laughs> I didn't know he was, he was on, on here. <laughs> Neither did I. Lewis said, uh, thoughts on Burr method or BRRR method? I don't uh, know. It works. It's just a slow game. It's a very slow game. That's Can you explain why, what that even means? It's, it's buy, renovate, uh, repair buy renovate repeat rehab or rehab something it's, it's one of the, it's an acronym right it's just an acronym so it's, yeah. it's buy, renovate um help us out here lewis re, refinance rehab repeat. yeah buy re, re, rehab re, re, refinance repeat something like that i don't i mean it's basically you let's just call let's call it what it is and stop trying to do the acronym you buy a single family home discounted wholesale then you fix it up and then you refinance it and then you rent it out Right, and you keep doing that over and over buy, again. Buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. Buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's a tongue, it's a, a tongue tire, right? Yeah, I called <laughs> it the burr method. <laughs> it, it works. It's just a super slow game. Like I realize that I can't scale single family homes. I still buy single family homes here and there, um, but they have to be. A, I bought a single family home last week for twenty five grand. I was worth seventy five grand. We're putting a ten in it right now for seven fifty eight hundred. But I'll probably end up selling it after I, I put a ten in it. It's just because I can buy parks with you know I can buy 50, 50, 40 units at a time. And I get <clears throat> you guys can't do that right away, but you can syndicate, guys. I teach you how to do that too. I've never syndicated because I don't have to, but I got guys that I interview that are syndicators. That's what you get. You get access to my network. I'm not just going to show you how to just do one thing. I'm going to show you every aspect of real estate. That's the difference between me and most coaches. I agree. Well, Chris, um, we, you answered 71 questions. <laughs> we really appreciate you giving us all this extra time tonight. I know it was your very, your very uh, wanted guy out there for coaching, and we really appreciate you. We've waited a long time to have you on our call tonight, and we really appreciate that. I've been waiting since last year to have Chris on this call. So we're so glad you're here. Thank you so much. And uh, guys, reach out to him and we'll email you afterwards. Chris, um, I, I'm going to email what, I, what you see right here on the screen. But if there's anything else you want me to send to the, 
attendees or the non-attendees, please do let me know and you have yourself a fantastic evening with your beautiful wife and your beautiful family and children. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. Everybody says thank you, Chris. Have a good evening. Thank you guys. Bye. Bye.